All right, good evening. Welcome to video number three in the series dealing with greatest common factors and least common multiples. Tonight, we're going to be looking at least common multiples. To begin with, we're going to need some definitions because we talked about factors last night, and tonight we're going to be talking about multiples. And one of the places students struggle the most is those two definitions. What is a factor versus what is a multiple? So here are some examples of each. Now that we've looked at some examples of the meanings of multiples and factors, we're now going to take a moment to look at exactly what is a least common multiple. Because while we can find many multiples for a number, when we're looking at two numbers, as we would if we were working with fractions, for example, and we wanted to find an equivalent fraction, remembering whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator in that fraction. Well we need to be able to find a common multiple that both of those numbers can go into. So for example, if I have the number 2 and 5, well I can multiply 2 times 5 together, that gives me 10, and that is automatically a multiple of both 2 and 5. But I'm not sure if it's the smallest common multiple, because anywhere 2 and 5 cross each other, so they'll cross again at 20, for example, and at 30, and at 40, and there are many multiples, but the least common multiple is the smallest one, and when we can deal with the smallest multiple possible, the least one, that's always best, because then when time comes to simplify the fraction, there's not as much work. You don't have to look at such large numbers, you can work with a smaller number. So, we're going to look at finding the least common multiples of two numbers. And we're going to look at method one, which is listing multiples. All right, as the title screen said, tonight we are looking at listing the multiples here. And we're going to start with a very simple uh, practice for it. So what I have here is two numbers, three and five. Now, we're going to work with just listing the multiples of 3 and 5. Let's go out about 5 numbers. So if I'm listing my 3's, I would go 3, 6, 9, 12, until I hit 5 multiples of 3. We'll do the same then for 5. What I'd like you to do at this time is grab a piece of paper and pencil, hit pause, grab a piece of paper and pencil, Write down 3 and 5 and see if you too can list the multiples of 3 and 5. And when we come back, we'll compare answers. Okay, what did you get for 3 and 5? Here is what I came up with. For multiples of 3, I came up with 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. For the 5's, let me move my hand here, we have 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. These are the multiples of 3 and 5. Now, listing multiples actually does two things. If you're having problems remembering your multiplication tables, remembering your multiplication problems, being able to count by these numbers will actually help you with that. Because, for example, if you really learn to count by 3's up through 10 digits, so 3 times 1, the multiples of 3 times 1 to 3 times 10, 3 to 30 in other words, when you are multiplying on your own, if you know those numbers, even if you're not sure of your answer, let's say you said 3 times 5 was 16, you should start to recognize that, oh, I've done the threes, and 16 does not sound like a number I've ever practiced with my threes, and then you can go back and correct it. So knowing your multiples actually has many, many good features for you. As far as finding common multiples, though, as we look at the three and five in the listing method, what we're going to look for is any numbers the two numbers share. 
So with 3, I see 3. I don't see a 3 with the 5s. Not a common multiple. 6. Nope, no 6. Not a common multiple. 9. Ah, getting close. 10. But not common. 12. Again, no. Nope. Over here I have 15. 15. A common multiple. Not only a common multiple, but the first common multiple you ran into. That is a very special one. It's not just a common multiple, it is the least common multiple. So we would show it like this. At the bottom of your paper, or in this case at the bottom of the problem, we would shorten least common multiple to LCM. And then, of course, we would record that 15 was the least common multiple of 3 and 5. So let's say I was adding two fractions. And in the denominator of one of them, there was a 3. So something thirds, two thirds, let's say, plus something fifths. Well, the rules of fractions are you cannot add them until the denominators are like denominators. If they are not common denominators, you cannot add them. So we would need to find a number that would allow us to make an equivalent fraction, one that has the same value but is represented with different numbers, different values. Okay, so the value of the entire object is not lost, but we've broken it up into, in this case, smaller pieces, specifically, according to our LCM, 15 So three, let's say two-thirds we had for the threes, I would multiply by whatever it takes 3 to get to 15. In this case, 3 times 5. By the way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. By listing them, you also know right away what number to multiply by. We would multiply by 5, and 2 thirds would become 10 fifteenths. The 5, 1, 2, 3, we'd multiply by 3, so fifths would become fifteenths. And if we said one-fifth for the fraction, it is now three-fifteenths. And we could then add. Or if we had to subtract, we could do the same thing. So the LCM, or the least common multiple, is very helpful. Plus, by going with the least common multiple, we're going with a number that can be simplified quite easily. All right. So we've looked at least common multiples. We really like to find that least common multiple because it really is the simplest number to use, especially if you have to simplify your answer, or you don't want to deal with fractions that become just totally unwieldy, that you can't really work with them. I now want to take a moment just to talk about the differences between least common multiple and just general common multiples. Because while these two numbers are always going to have a least common multiple, and they will always have a least common multiple, they have many other multiples that are going to be common as you count on forever and ever and ever. It just keeps going. Let's look at 3 and 6, for example. 3, if you count by 3, we'll go 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 24, 30, and so on. 6 goes 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, and so on forever. But if you notice right away, I've underlined 6 because 6 is the least common multiple of 3 and 6. Noticing it can be one of the numbers that is the least common multiple because 3 actually goes into 6. That's wonderful with prime numbers too because while with prime numbers it was difficult finding factors, finding common multiples is much easier with them because you're going to count by them. Notice though, as you move across the 3 and the 6, after the 6, there's just multiple after multiple that the numbers have in common. They have 12 in common. They have 18 in common. They have 24 in common. They'll eventually have, what do we have here? 30, 30 will be in common. So these numbers are just going to go on and on and on. I specifically marked off two of them, though. 6 is the least common multiple. And you'll notice I circled 18. Because when you're stuck with any two digits, and you can't find a common multiple, or even if it's more than two digits. If you take the numbers that you started with and multiply them by themselves, so in this case, 3 times 6, 
you will automatically find a common multiple. It may not be the least common multiple. There's no guarantee of that. But you will have found a common multiple because if you think about it, 3 will be a factor of that number and so will 6, meaning they will both go into it. That goes back to your fact families you learned back in third grade. Now 18, of course, being the common multiple made up for multiplying them, it could be used in a problem with fractions as well. And that's okay. You may just have to do more work when it comes time to simplify your problem. An example of two numbers that would fall under the category I was just talking about might be two prime numbers like 7 and 11. I could count by 7s and 11s, and really if I'm going to use the listing method of finding the common multiples or the least common multiple, I'd want to do that. 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, 63, 70, 77. And I would go on and on until I found a number that matched what 11 would go into as well. So 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, and you'll see why I stopped at 77. Well, 77, that is 7 times 11. So again, it's okay to use that method to find a common multiple of multiplying the two numbers together. 7 times 11 is 77. And by doing that, we did find a common multiple that you could use to, in this case, work a fraction or do any other work where you would need a common multiple. And it's okay to use this, but again, anywhere you can find the least common multiple, you want to find that first. Now, in truth, this is the least common multiple of 711, and that does happen quite often that the two numbers multiplied together as factors will give you the multiple of the two numbers that's common. In matter of fact, the least common multiple. Okay, I really hope this has helped with uh, understanding the listing method for least common multiples. My next video is going to look at now how we can use prime factorization to also find the least common multiples. What I have found over the years is this is the one that more students have difficulties with the idea of using the least common multiple, or rather getting the least common multiple from prime factorization. So that will be our next video. Please join us for it.